And Meg, yeah. why don't you say a word about what you offer people and, and how things are going, and then we'll read Christine's letter. Wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. Mm-hmm. Yes, so um, inspired by all of the um, amazing people, you out there, with your questions about your own health path, along with Sananda's work and the Company of Heaven and their encouragement to remember we're taking our bodies along with us in this ascension, and they are, the cells in our bodies are equally in need of aligning with our ascension as well as our hearts and our minds. So he encouraged all of us to come together and create a document for everyone to be able to use as a reference for what they're already doing. So this may just be a tweak for some people. It may take some people deeper in understanding and 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 healing. So very much tied to Sananda's calls and the work that the Arcturians are doing with us on helping us to align with our bodies and our hearts and our minds to get everything in alignment with our highest good and food and how we nourish ourselves is one of them. So I also offer, in addition to the guide, if anybody needs some more personal support with their healing path, if they want somebody just to do some gatekeeping for some different information they're hearing from their different um, health team, I'm happy to be a resource. And my website is btwdavis at gmail.com. And you can also send me a message, as Catherine said, to my Facebook page, which is Wisdom Within hyphen Meg Davis. And I also post some relevant recipes and nutritional information and posts from other people that help us to know more about how to pick the best foods for us to feel good and to move through our health issues. And seeing was really relevant to me today, a wonderful member of our Healing for Ascension Tour group administration team, as well as um, a longtime light worker doing what she calls grid work on working with the crystals and the grid masters and the company of heaven and Mother Terra on uh, cleaning up the universal grid that gives and feeds information to and from all sentient beings, our plant life, our animal kingdoms, Mother Earth, and all inhabitants, and making sure we're all talking and communicating clearly and all debris is swept away to make sure we have all our ducks in a row for our ascension. And I was commenting to her that a lot of my friends were feeling a lot of shifts since the blood moon last week, and we were going through a really big shift and especially in the last uh, yesterday and her letter described possibly one of the root sources of what we were feeling and then I also had a confirmation from two other posts from different light workers that I subscribed to saying exactly the same thing as Christine's letter so I hope to offer this and for people who are going through changes with the increased light that we're getting from the company of heaven and creator and one called the tsunami of love and when we have more light come in we've got to clear out to make room and when we clear out to make more room it sometimes looks like things coming up that we thought we'd handled and it's just the final clearing so she gave me permission thank you so much Christine and she wrote this for everyone because we were all there the company of heaven mother Terra, the collective I am presence of every man woman and child evolving on this planet so it was very inspirational so everybody listening you were all there with her doing this work so here's her letter I have two events to share which we all participated in together as one the cities on Terra now burn with the ruby crystal flame. The first event happened Monday. I was called to the desert. She lives in Las Vegas. And you were all there in your higher presence. Performed activation of the ruby crystal into the node supporting every major city on Earth. Las Vegas, Hong Kong, Tokyo, 
Cairo, Paris, New York, and so on. Los Angeles was the final to go. The momentum from the others helped it to go. Once the major cities were lit, the smaller ones began lighting up like lightning bugs. I have what has become a tradition. This was my favorite part. <laughs> I have what has become a tradition with the company of heaven after such quote-unquote work. We danced it out together on the way down the hills back to the car. This time, I put on my music for the dance party, and who showed up? The reptilians. They were so happy. We danced all the way back to the car. We, the other event that occurred that we all helped with happened yesterday. You helped in the presence with your higher self, and you helped with the service and clearing you are all doing right now, wherever you are around the world. I was in the desert. Usually I do some kind of action that I am guided to perform. This time, the company of heaven were waiting for me. They just asked me to call everyone, so I did. I called all the administration team. I called the Healing for Ascension tour group. I called Pramas Varupa. I called everybody on the call, the Healing for Ascension Tour, the light workers, the grid masters from every kingdom and domain on Terra. You were all there. I saw each one of you. Then it began then it began with us included. It was an event that was already in motion before we arrived. We were just the joiners. We all, plus the company of heaven, formed a large pillar of light. Gabriella was beaming immensely. I kept staring at her. And for those of you who don't know, Gabriella can create a pillar of light like nobody's business. <laughs> the pillar of light grew and grew in size and intensity. The lines of the grid began to glow. There was a strong sense that we were powering up. The lines on the grid are conscious. They are made of diamond one creator and cosmic light they began to glow and shine beautiful there is such power and peace in the energy they contain and emit then the grid shifted to a higher dimensional platform those words are lacking in describing the joy and wonder of it every kingdom every race shifted with it I knew we had all come to operate at a higher plateau we have a new base camp. I thought this would happen after the RV, so I was surprised, surprised, surprised. Thank you all. I love you so dearly. Christine Burke. Thank you, Christine. And thank wow. you for allowing me to read it. Isn't that great? That is so vivid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can feel we were there. <laughs> yeah. I've been feeling it too. Yeah. And oh my everybody goodness. was there. Everyone. Uh, everybody, the collective. It was a new base camp. Can't you feel it? We're at a new. New base new camp. Place. A beautiful way to put it. Mm -hmm. You know, we. it's hard. Those of us who are not grid workers or, or um, aren't working on the crystals or the portals or things like that. It's difficult to imagine, but Christine put it, described it so beautifully, it really came to life. We've all done a little bit of this, of the, you know, activating the crystal work, but I think we all have different kinds of assignments. And it's, it's wonderful when you hear from someone who's been doing this kind of work for years, on their own, which many of them have done, and when they finally share what they've actually done, you can go back in your life and and make the connections for what happened on that day when they were doing this work and be amazed because we can feel it. It's hard to it's today it's hard for me even to sit down <laughs> so. Yeah, energized, and it's 
it's like I'm, it's just spilling out everywhere. I don't quite know how to focus it yet. So I think if people aren't aware of what's happening, that could be a little distressing, you know, if you're just feeling antsy. I know it's just the energy's rising, and it will give us more power. But again, we have to learn how to focus it and organize it ourselves so we're not driven crazy by all these changes <laughs> that are happening. But thank you so much, Christine, and thank you, Meg, for reading that. Yeah. It really helps, doesn't it? It really helps to know this. Yes, it and really I'm, does. And, you know, Eleonora, who's um, visiting with her beautiful daughters here for a little time in the country from the city, just hmm. said that before we even read Christine's letter. She goes, I'm feeling so discombobulated. And then we read Christine's letter and went, oh, thank you, Christine. I'm good now. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, that's what it is. Also, <laughs> yeah. I want to mention I I received... Um, someone sent me um, a channeling from uh, Patricia Cotarobles, and you can easily find this on the internet. She wrote a beautiful compilation of the work that she and her group did in Wyoming at Jackson Hole, and it makes so much sense. They have done tremendous activations, and she she gives great detail of what they experienced and what they did together. So I think that's going to help people as well. Um, if you just look up her name, Patricia Cota Robles, you can get her. It's her latest blog entry. So I recommend that too. It fits right in with the things that I've been given. And she has tremendous detail in that report. So it will help everybody to kind of put things together and really understand that what's happening now is cosmic. It's not just happening to us. It's not just about an RV. It's not just about raising our vibration. It is intergalactic, cosmic, entirely universal uh, uplifting. And we're at the center of it. So is it any wonder we're feeling a little discombobulated? <laughs> this is this is mm-hmm. big stuff. Mm-hmm. So we're just when when I'm feeling this, you know, what do we do next? Kind of feeling. I I use it by just saying, okay, what work needs to be done right now, and just focus and. My work is always to do a healing call or to help people to manage it. So I think that's, you know, that's what our work is now, to help everybody manage it, make the most of it, understand it, accept it, and go with it. So we're making, we are the boots on the ground. We're a a big team. And when people start to move together, it is just an amazing thing we had an example just the last couple of weeks of Hong Kong and John Stewart did a show on the Chinese demonstrations and he said not only do they they do business better than we do these days but they do demonstrations better than we do (laughs) (laughs) and he showed them thousands and thousands of people in the streets with umbrellas. So when they shoot the tear gas and stuff like that, they put up their umbrellas. So it's become what they call the umbrella revolution. And they are just persistent. Now they're lying in the streets and sleeping in the streets. It's just amazing how persistent they've been. And so they're setting a really good example for us. So it's not just an Arab Spring now. It's global. All over the world, people are demonstrating for peace. And I think it's really important that we make this point again. We Yes, we see some horrible things happening, 
But these horrible things that are happening right now are a result of the change. They're not in spite of, they're not to stop it. They're happening because of the shift. And because the battle between light and dark, which we have learned recently, you cannot win by fighting. (laughs) You must turn away. The battle has been over centuries. And this is where uh, Patricia Cota Robles gave a really good under, gave us some really good understandings that the openings that have happened during the last month are to clear away all earlier um, residue of dark feeling, any pain, um, resentment, anger, darkness from this lifetime and all past lifetimes. So if you're feeling something come up and and you're feeling grumpy or you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling upset, it's something that's clearing. And it's now our work to breathe it out, let it go. And this is a tremendous gift from God. It has never been done before in this way where everybody clears at once and of course when there are people who've lived dark lives what's coming up is all that darkness and this is why some people are acting murderously suddenly or unexpectedly or by design in their current lives they're acting on these dark feelings so this is actually a good thing Now, someone whose loved one has just been killed is not thinking it's a good thing, but these are also by contract. So there are some people who came here knowing that this would be how they would leave. And when you can think of it that way, they didn't really go anywhere. They just left this dimension to go to another dimension. It makes it way easier so we are in the midst of a tremendous tremendous shift and anyone who isn't feeling it must be completely asleep because it's been profound and since about the middle of last month it's just been constant so we're getting enormous enormous help in the form of the plasma belt, the high-level energies coming from the sun. And I want to include that in our healing today for everyone, to help everybody anchor, get steady, absorb the knowledge that this is for us. It is a gift. It may make you feel a little unsettled, but it is a gift. And we can ride it out. Now that's what we're going to do. We're going to ride it out. And then once you get past it, you know, you go, oh, well, that wasn't so bad. I'm still here. <laughs> Everything's fine. And then you're suddenly on a higher level. Mm-hmm. And, and looking back, you go, oh, well, yeah, I kind of remember that, but oh, well. <laughs> Glad it's glad I'm here now. And we've been saying too recently, I wouldn't have traded this last two years for anything. Oh yes, absolutely. It's every just been aha amazing. moment. Yeah, every aha moment. Every every memory that gets dissolved with love. Every chance I have to to come into alignment and to clear an old way of thinking, an old way of being conditioned. Oh, it feels free again and again. You just marvel at the increased level of love available. Like you feel like your heart's about to burst out of your chest, Mm -hmm. like you said. And when all this gets freed, 
wow, just what are we capable of when we join together with this grand capacity? It is, it is so joyous. We need new words. We need a new dictionary for this light mm-hmm. word. And yeah, there aren't enough joy yet, words in our vocabulary. There's not enough joy words, yes. I agree with you. And love words and way to talk mm-hmm. about it. And and at the same time, I am also clearing old wounds, clearing old ways of operating, clearing perceived flights, clearing old ways of reaction, reacting, mm-hmm. and bringing new light to it. So, yes, most of my experience has been heart-opening, widening, expansion, joy. But there's also been times of crying and releasing and awareness and gunk. And But the more I clear and the more I take these messages and shine into that gunk, the way we were programmed, the way we were taught to respond I in a certain way, you saying it's gunk you're glaring away? Gunk. <laughs> gunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of various colors. <laughs> but, you know, what's so powerful, I, I lead a, a meditation in the morning on Sunday mornings. And the group this morning is just a representative of what we're all feeling. But what I heard was, yes, I'm clearing. Yes this came up but this time I did it different this time I was aware but I loved myself while I looked at it and that made all the difference oh, and these are people that oh. haven't listened to the messages necessarily they're just the light is informing them how to look and clear with love it was so beautiful to hear and what a different experience that is to go in peacefully to what you want to clear with light, not with a judgmental flashlight to say you should have known better. It makes mm-hmm. all the difference in the world. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so grateful to this new light that informs us how to treat ourselves so sweetly and so gently, but also with purpose. I am so grateful. Mm, that's a lovely way of putting it. Yes, so that's our project now, to clear away everything lovingly and especially loving yourself in the process. Be gentle, be kind, be compassionate with yourself. And this, we, we've been teaching this all along, but it's be, it's like the intensity kept increasing this idea that you cannot call yourself a good person if you beat yourself up. You can't claim to be a good person because you're a person too and if you're beating anybody up, you're not being a good person. So, if you want to be a light worker, you want to claim you're a light worker, you have to be good to yourself first. And you have to learn to be compassionate and forgiving and honest. And then it doesn't hurt when you see something about yourself that you don't approve of or you don't like. You just look at it and go, okay, what would I like to do differently? How would I like to change that? What's my goal? And then you go for it. With no condemnation, no Mostly not even any discussion with yourself. Just, uh, oops, uh, don't like that. I'm going to change it. I want to know where it came from, yes. But mostly, I just want to do things differently. And then you can. It becomes so much easier. I remember the time, you know, I've told people I worked for 40 years with Amos. More than that now. It's going on 50 years, I think. Um And I remember the time when I discovered that, you know, when I really finally got it. Oh, this process, it was therapy then, you know, at the time. This process is not to find out all the things that are wrong with me so that I can fix them. Not at all. 
this process was to find all the things I was taught that don't agree with who I am, with my authentic self, and leave it behind. And then it's a completely different process. It's who am I in the truest place, in the deepest place in my heart, and anything that doesn't match with that loving, true self just has to go. doesn't matter who taught me that thing. doesn't matter where I got it. It just has to go. And then you find yourself elevating. Every time you discover something about yourself that you don't like, you come out of it higher. So then it's something to look forward to. <laughs> ironically and so I'm also noticing this um, kind of self awareness in some of the requests for healing which I'm going to read now <clears throat> and you'll hear it people saying I get it that I have this penchant for something and it's getting in my way and it's what's causing my ill health so <clears throat> we're also getting a lot of requests from people to help their friends. But here's a testimonial that is just going to knock your socks off. It's from Carlos. Carlos, I love his name. Carlos Soriano Marti. He is one of our Facebook administrators, and he's sending a testimonial and also a request for healing. But here's the testimonial that I just got such a kick out of. He says, my very good friend called me a few weeks ago so concerned and worried about her dog. He had terrible issues in his vertebral column and was in terrible pain. The results from the veterinarian were terrible, and the dog's only hope was a complicated surgery. I told her I would take him with me to the Arcturian ship. I told her of the schedule and asked her to be calm and aware that this was going to be happening at that specific time. I have been doing that for weeks. After the first session, Golfo, that's the dog's name, felt relieved and seemed to be at peace. But no physical recovery was shown or manifested, just calm. Tonight, and this was a few days ago, I guess, she called me with tears in her eyes and saying, Thank you, thank you, thank you. They went to the veterinarian, and the doctor could not believe what he saw. The dog was perfect. Healed. Oh, Catherine. Isn't that lovely? Just wonderful. That just brings tears to my eyes. So thank you, Carlos, for healing your friend's dear dog. Completely healed in just a matter of weeks no surgery no suffering thank goodness so thank you for her and of course um, Carlos sends his complete recognition and gratefulness to all the people involved and on this part of the veil and back home so now he has a healing request now that he sees how good, how well it works and how good we are at this, he's got another request. So his friend, uh, Maite Gonzalez, is going through some issues, um, health issues. Uh, last doctor's test came out with the terrible announcement of a degenerative neuropathy with sensitive and motion disorders. It's as if her nervous system is dying slowly. She can't coordinate or move properly. Yeah, sounds like a neurological, a degenerative disease. So she is a very loving person, very enlightened, even though she may not know it. The good thing is that you don't have to explain anything for her to believe. She just knows. So I told her we would have her attended on, to on Sunday's session, so today. And she would be taken to the ship and would receive all our love and healing energy um, and all the support and wisdom of Masters and the Arcturians. She'll be focusing on the session on Sunday, as she doesn't speak English and will not be able to listen to the call, but she will feel our energy coming to her. Maite Gonzalez, we wish you well. I think she's probably in Spain, where Carlos is. So 
So if it's possible to mention her on the show and add her to listeners' awareness, great. No, it's perfect. We will definitely do that today, Carlos. Okay, we have a couple of other requests, and then we're going to call on Sananda and all go together to the Arcturian ship. But these um, these requests also help us to focus on a particular thing, and almost every time we have someone who has cancer. So we're going to have a cancer group as usual. This is from Pamela for Pramathi Mosaram. It's a request to her friend's mom. She's been diagnosed with cancer of her womb just yesterday. Her name is Pramathi Mosaram and her date of birth is 10 October 1937, so she's in her 70s. She's also being told that she has heart failure, diabetes, and hypertension. Now, these, this sounds like a good, a good um, person to find out about Meg's manual. Mm-hmm. Someone, yeah. yeah, so maybe they can um, get in touch with you and we can help her to learn how to change her diet because all of those things they're discussing, heart failure, diabetes, hypertension, and cancer, all of those things can be cured with proper nutrition. Her son was told by the doctor that she has very little time left and nothing can be done for her. Yeah, I love it when doctors say that. He's been told his mom, he hasn't told his mom yet about the cancer and he's taking it very badly. So could healing be done for the whole family? Yes. Of course. We will have all of them in our hearts. So Pramathi, Mosaram and her family, we're going to give you a big boost of love and also some suggestions for healing. So next is a same Deo. Thank you so much. This sounds like a difficult issue. And here's someone who really is thinking about how to heal himself. The problem appears to be a twisted muscle. It's complex as the muscles appear to have a knot in the throat. Mm-hmm. This has blocked energies to all of my body. Therefore, it's become a pain wire that begins on the forehead, left side, through the eyelids, through both the sides of the neck, resulting in toothaches, down my back, right toward the anal area. Also, some part of the pain extends down into his left leg and arm. Well, I'm not sure if Asain is a woman or a man, but let's just say Asain. It's mostly concentrated on the left side of the body. The main knot is in the throat. As a result, I cannot even contact my higher self for healing or even meditate because the moment any energy builds up, there's a searing pain and I cannot cross that barrier. That's that's very interesting, and I bet you that's something we can help with right away. P.S. Emotion-wise, I've had a lot of pent-up anger in the past, mainly because of being a consistent victim of bullying and violence and a powerful lack of love and trust, including from my own family members. And therefore, I've never had a love relationship, too. I've tried to clear as much as possible from my own side, but it appears that there are areas I haven't been able to light up and penetrate. This could be a key cause. Well, here's somebody who's really thought about what the problem is. So we're going to give a boost and a push and send you right over the top and and out the other side. So I can't thank you enough for scheduling this healing session. All right, Asaim, here we go. You're going to get a huge boost of love energy to heal and let go of all that pent up stuff it's time it's not serving you no matter how cruel how abusive how disgusting and horrible a family member or members might be it's just not worth it to hang on to it 
it's twisted him up into knots. That's so graphic, isn't it? And our same is realizing that the expression of the pain is literally correlated with the problem. So a knot in your throat, of course, fear of expressing what you feel. And when you get close, you start to raise your vibration, it kicks in. It's nothing more than fear. A fear of letting go, a fear of saying what you'd like to say. So say it. You don't have to say it to them necessarily. First say it out loud. All the things you object to, all the things you that made you angry. Say it. And then you won't have to strangle yourself anymore. All right, here's a request, another request from Pam for Prakashni, Mrs. Mathura, and Pregalathan Pele, who is Brian. Um, here's for Prakashni, who has been told she has cancer cells in her cervix. She's been put on steroid medication. Hi, she's from South Africa, and her birth date is 14 March 79, so she's pretty young to have something like this. And, oh, my gosh, steroids. All right, I'm sure Meg will have something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> and here's yep. a healing request for Mrs. Mathura, who her birth date's 1959, having trouble with her left knee. She's had many knee replacements and keeps coming back with an infection. Also a healing request. Oh, I'd like to suggest, too, um, colloidal silver. People who have infection problems, colloidal silver was the magic that, that everyone used before penicillin came along. And it's very effective. You can take it every day to a teaspoon a day to heal any kind of bacteria or virus. And it doesn't have the terrible side effects that um, antibiotics have. Also, there are lots of, of alternative health people who are saying um, colloidal silver, silver will knock out Ebola. And there's also some other good research now. There's a, play, a hospital in Texas that uses ultraviolet light to kill Ebola uh, virus on surfaces in hospitals. So it is not the pandemic that they're trying to get us to believe. There's a good chance it has been deliberately spread yes. by the call. But there are cures. So don't get all upset that we're being invaded by Ebola. We're not. And even if it does come to this country, there are cures for it. So this whole thing is just hype. To get people to take the vaccine. And by the way, folks, there's a good chance that if you take the vaccine, you will get Ebola. So don't anyone fall for the hype and run out and get an Ebola vaccination because that is far more dangerous. So let's just put that one out there right now. Don't Thank you, Catherine. Do not get a vaccination for Ebola or for any form of cancer either, by the way. It's um, any vaccination at this point is going to do more damage than good. Okay, so this is also Brian, um, who has low blood pressure and headaches, tummy aches, and burning eyes. And thank you for the beautiful work you guys are doing. So Pam, oh, here's her beautiful real name, Krishna Veni Govinder. Krishna Veni, that's a lovely name. 
All right, we have one more request from Judy. Um, She's a member of the Healing for Ascension Tour group, and she's been to one of our workshops. So she wants to heal from ringworm, which she contracted about three years ago from a cat. It's persisted and spreads all over her body, and she's tried all kinds of natural remedies, internal and external, but it persists. And she's saying, as it's contagious, I'm prevented from engaging in all activities involving skin-to-skin contact with others. She's been applying natural remedies externally twice a daily over a complete body, and it's very time-consuming. And here's another very um, aware comment. Some esoteric research revealed that ringworm is caused by feelings of being offended, of being thin-skinned, and letting people, places, and things get to me. This is bang on. I really want to start living a life again which includes safe touch, something essential to one's well-being, and not have to be so preoccupied with myself. I also wish assistance to improve my financial situation so that I can earn what I need from my business to create the life that I desire. When I listen to your sudden calls, I can feel powerful healing effects from Sananda. It is life-changing. Thank you for taking the time, and she looks forward to the healing call today. So, Judy, hi there. And, yes, we're going to send you a big blast. I know, or I'm pretty sure, that the thing that's called ringworm is really a fungus, isn't it, Meg? Yes. So, I bet that you and Judy can figure out a nutritional approach. My guess is it's going to have something to do with acid and alkalinity in her system. Mm-hmm. Ba- balancing that. Yes. And I'll bet you, Judy, you can eliminate this problem in a matter of a week or two. I'm just saying, I think we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, can I make a com- quick comment? Sure. Um, one of the things that I've um, found very effective with my own patients, and Sananda confirmed it on a few calls back, is the present powerful bacteria that we should be born with if we have a natural childbirth and that we're and we're breastfed. We have a very powerful immune system that comes online. Throughout our history with steroids, antibiotics, vaccinations, inoculations, stress and others, that bacteria, which are, you know, billions of critters that are given to us by creation to help us live in a microbial world. They are our defense, part of our defense mechanism. And many people have said that 85% of our ability to live with a proper immune response to life is our colonization of gut bacteria. Mm-hmm. So I cannot emphasize enough that people get on fermented vegetables, fermented foods, kombucha, miso, anything fermented sauerkraut. Most cultures around the world eat regular fermented foods throughout their day. But, and of course it was a way of of preserving food. Right. But something got lost here in this country. Now, Koreans eat kimchi, the Japanese eat miso and tempeh. We have most of Europe and Russia do sauerkraut and other fermented vegetables, and we have many other forms. And kombucha tea is one of my favorites now, fermented mushroom with amazing healing powers as well as the bacteria and in the enzymes you get from the fermentation process. So mm-hmm. incredibly powerful that many times when I'm listening to the request for healing, I'm thinking, Eat fermented vegetables, eat fermented foods, drink kombucha tea every day, and watch when you put those allies back into your system that we should always have maintaining all the time. 
watch what happens to the body. We're never meant to do it alone. It's another level of we're not here to do this alone. Mm-hmm. And we're also not meant to to be alone even in our own body. We were given helpers that are vital. And Western medicine antibiotics just clear cut us like a rainforest. And our body will develop inflammatory results from infancy on. We can never recover. So if you're listening and you're not doing fermented vegetables, that's the quickest way you can see an immune change in your body besides juicing. So that's my public service announcement for the day. That's great. So, all right, let's say you're somebody who's never had fermented vegetables in your diet, except maybe you had sauerkraut once in a while. So Mm -hmm. if people can go to a health store and get Mm -hmm. kombucha tea, does it come in a tea bag? It comes actually as a liquid. It's already fermented for you. And it comes in a drink usually with a flavor, like a bilberry or a green or a raspberry, just to make it flavorful, although I think it's delicious. So you can buy raw, organic kombucha. That's where I started. And Mm -hmm. then I learned how to do it myself. But that's only if you're really jazzed about doing things in your own kitchen. It's not necessary. You can buy kombucha tea. I actually trade with a woman. I do fermented vegetables, and she does kombucha, and we trade. And that Uh way, we're not having to do it all ourselves, and we're freed up. I love doing cultured vegetables. It's very simple. I ordered for under $20 the actual bacteria off a website called bodyecology.com, and they sent me probiotics in a little packet, just like yeast when you make fermented bread. Mm Mm-hmm. And I threw a bunch of vegetables in a food processor, ground it up. It in a what? 15 minutes in a food processor. Processor, okay. And I did beets and carrots and cabbage. That was it. And I ground it up and I dumped a bag of the little probiotics in a mason jar and I screwed the lid shut and I placed it on my shelf for six days. It took 30 minutes to do. It was so simple. And in six days, it was fermented, and I had the best cultured vegetables I've ever tasted. But again, if you'd rather not go that route, you can purchase cultured vegetables at a health food store. And they sometimes culture beets, and they'll culture pickles, pickles Mm -hmm. most people are familiar with. You can actually buy cultured pickles. So you can continue to eat your pickle, addiction, which many people do have a pickle addiction. They love pickles. <laughs> and you can get your probiotics, and it will start start colonizing in your small intestine and creating your immune system that is needed to digest your food as well as create the proper immune response to a virus, bacteria, fungus, candida, or a parasite. And well, most fungus. healthy... Judy can yep. knock this out using... So fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for those people who have taken probiotics before, I have taken probiotics my whole life, and never did I get the response as when I actually ate live food. There's something hmm. about the live food comes with a different energetic than if I take right. a pill that says I have a trillion critters there. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is, but it just is different. I can feel the difference. And, in fact, an easy um, confirmation is after I began really drinking one 12-ounce kombucha t- drink a day and three tablespoons of cultured vegetables, I would just eat it every meal. I would have my quinoa and kale and then a scoop of sauerkraut. I would have my lentils, and I would have a scoop of sauerkraut. In three days, I developed a cold, which was a virus just resting latent or dormant in my system. Hmm. And when I gave my body 
all those bacteria, it said, okay, I'm strong enough and I'm going to go after that virus. And I developed a cold. In 24 hours, it was completely gone. No residual. And I felt better than ever. And most people would say, oh, but you got sick. I'm like, Mm -hmm. well, sometimes when when your immune system is strong enough, it looks like getting sick. So when you do start taking kombucha or fermented vegetables, I bet you, you will experience getting sick because you've got bacteria and fungus and viruses just waiting, draining your energy, creating inappropriate immune responses, and feeling overwhelmed. So let's bring the help. Let's do some group consciousness work back in the small intestine and bring our armies back in and then we don't have to do it alone and very soon you'll start feeling better. It's easy to make yourself or you can purchase it so even if you're not um, if you feel like you don't have the excess income to purchase it you can make it from scratch very easily just like my friend who's German said I grew up smelling sauerkraut from the barrels in my basement everybody made their own sauerkraut so you can do that, too. It doesn't take an arm and a leg, and you will really feel a difference. Let me ask you, when you do, is it like um, when you save the, the, the yeast, the active part of the bread? If you have sourdough, for instance, you save a piece of the sourdough, and then you make it in the next batch. Can you do that with fermented vegetables? Do you save the juice and do another batch or do you have to start fresh Uh each time no you can do each one great question it's called the mother you could Mm -hmm. heard of that before bragged Mm -hmm. apple cider vinegar has had the same mother since the early 1900s and they just keep using the same original and keep adding it to the next batch so what i do is i take about a quarter cup from the previous previous jar and mm-hmm. I add it to the new one, and I don't have to use a new packet of bacteria because it comes in the juice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's self-sustaining at that point. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And the name of the place where you ordered the probiotics? BodyEcology.com. Body Ecology. Great. So, folks, you've just gotten the first step to healing all these things that people describe today. And I'm sure that it's going to have a huge effect on cancer and other um, severe problems like that. So let's, now that we have the basis for how people are going to take this in hand, how they're going to do their own work to help heal, there's something really important about that step as well because once you make up your mind that you are going to heal this problem whatever it is once you decide you are not going to live like this you're not going to keep this problem you're going to finish with it and you're going to do whatever it takes I promise you you will heal because that thrust of energy is so positive that there is no disease that can live in that environment that will to be healthy is what really is the cure and then when you give your body these powerful aids and like I love the way you put that Meg the group consciousness in your (laughs) small intestine (laughs) (laughs) then how could you remain sick in that state you know if every part of your body is working together you're going to feel fabulous you're going to have a really good time while you're healing and you're going to come out the other side like um, Carlos's friend's dog completely healed see dogs don't fight it you know, when they got this lovely dog, Golfo, 
got the vibe, got the healing energy, and just absorbed it. And so, boom, healthy reaction. We're more complicated. A lot of us insist on remaining sick. Now, that sounds a little harsh, but any time you hear yourself, I have a suggestion for um, Asim, who's talking about the throat, the back, the forehead. It's not the forehead. It's your forehead. It's my throat. So when you begin to get closer to your body and really accept that it's you who are going to nourish and heal this body that was the precious gift you were given, then your body will begin to respond. Bodies like to be loved. So let's see what happens. All right, so it's time to call on Sananda. 